So my name's Dave King from the VMXDN at Fox Hills and this is Dave Thorpe's 1989 500cc world title winning RC500. Now a lot of you will remember that I actually owned one of these. I bought one from Dave, uh, his own bike in 2008. So that one had a bit of a story, this one's had a bit of a story. There's only two in existence on the planet, this one and the one that I owned. The one that I owned is now in the USA and that was given to Dave as a show bike when Dave won the title, as were all of his bikes. So he had the 85, the 86 and the 89. They had no engine internals in them, no suspension internals and that's how they were sold back in 2008. So I managed to find the correct, uh, correct internals for my bike and Dave actually rode it several times at the VMXDN. Um, this one, however, has got a different story. So there, as I said, there was two bikes. This one at the end of 89, uh, when Dave left and went to Kawasaki, this one went back to Germany to a museum and there it stayed up until 2014. Um, in 2014, this was sold to a friend of mine and just last week we tracked it down and it's now back in England with a super Dave Thorpe enthusiast and sponsor of Dave Thorpe to this day. Um, and you'll be able to see it with Dave at VMXDN Fox Hills at Bank Holiday August weekend. Get your tickets now. Just wanted to give you a little run over, just a, a little light run over of how different an RC500 is to a CR500. So first of all, on, on Dave's bike, tall seat foam. Dave was a big guy, tall like myself. Uh, the iconic number three, the Technocell yellow plates. The Canon, the, the um, HRC alloy muffler. You'll never see another, another one like this. Just an absolute work of art. Oversized radiators, the, pro the radiators here from a stock CR500 are about 50% bigger. Obviously these bikes produced big horsepower and they needed to be kept cool. This one has got the Uber Rec. Uh, I've never seen another one on RC500, the, a cone pipe. Again, this bike is not restored. This bike has just got super patina. It was, it was taken from the team, from Dave and Keith. At the end of 89, it's had a little bit of touching up um, on the on the frame rails whether you get a bit of boot rub but it's never been restored not polished nothing um, you've got this uber trick magnesium uh, remo removable clutch cover um, if I come round here a bit I'll show you a little bit a bit better so the back brake lever looks like a stock back brake lever but it's actually handmade uh, for for HRC um, foot pegs. The foot pegs always on these bikes make me laugh. On a modern bike you've got these massive foot pegs that got to be like three or four inches um, in length and with serrated teeth on that would just tear you apart. On a factory 500 back in the 80s they can't be any more than about two inches in length and less than an inch in width. But I don't remember the rider's feet falling off the 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 uh, pegs too often. Um, if I just move round, swinging arm, that drop dead gorgeous Coke bottle swinging arm. People have tried to replicate this, and they do they do do a good job, but they can never do an exact same job as what the HRC Honda factory did. Um, factory Nissan brakes. Factory wheels, the hubs on these bikes were um, a lot fatter than a stock bike and they run uh, double bearings on each side so it gives the bike, um, you know, a bit, a bit of failure. If, if one bearing goes then it's still got another one to keep, keep it going and these bikes produce huge horsepower, huge horsepower. I actually I rode Dave's bike and it was a very linear power but you knew there was plenty there. Um, oversized heavy duty spokes. Um, the sprockets were made by AFAM, the discs are specially heat treated and they will only fit the RC wheels, they will not fit a stock wheel, they've got a different um, bolt pattern. Heavy duty rim, 
and I suspect this one's probably even got the original tire on it. Um, factory shock, obviously factory cylinder, magnesium casings, and the iconic <laughs> David Thorpe Union Jack. You know, how cool is that? How cool. Um, front end, so you've got a magnesium top clamp and a billet lower one and then the factory shower forks. Now, interesting story about those forks is uh, when I went to George Obey's house in 2009 or 2008 to buy parts for my Thought bike, um, he had a set of these forks loose, not on a bike. And I said, George, are they for sale? And he just looked at me and he said, no, I will never sell those forks. I said, why? And he said, those forks made me a world champion. They were the, he said, they were the difference between me winning a title and not winning my titles. They were that good. So they are huge sentimental value to him and he, he would never part with them. Um, factory front wheel, again, double bearings, bigger hub, bigger spokes, uh, different bolt, a six bolt pattern on the, um, on the front disc, especially heat, heat treated. Um, yeah, just a just a super cool bit of kit. And I, I'll just get the camera and I'll run you around and show you some of the other side. So you got the little shorty lever there with grip tape on there, the Nissan factory cylinder, the oh so cool Renthal bar pad, the cloth bar pad, oh it's an interesting story here, so on the on the 88 RC500 the radiator cap was much more exposed from that and a couple of times I think the riders caught the radiator cap and actually knocked the cap off obviously in a, in a result in a DNF so the 89 bike they made this cool little um, fold over to protect the top of the radiator cap from a rider accidentally knocking it with his knee it's those triple clamps and forks I was telling you about Now here's another little thing you, you might have seen but never really noticed. The vents in the discard. That's actually the Honda wing if you look closely. How cool is that? that talk about attention to detail. The radiators, as I said, they're about a radiator and a half. And the, the protectors are actually two protectors riveted together to... Um, to, yeah, to, to protect the, the, the radiators from stones. The decompressor for, um, for, the, uh, for the decompressor on the, the cylinder. Go down here, I will show you, there we go. So there's the decompressor that bolts straight into the into the head as i say operated by that little lever and a little vent tube at the bottom magnesium honda racing cases hrc gear um gear shift and again look at those tiny pegs you see the th thing that's my, it's almost only the thickness of my finger magnesium carburetor fuel tank looks standard but it's bigger than standard obviously these bikes drank a bit of fuel back in the day. Airbox, very standard looking airbox with modifications. So it's got, um, they cut vents and put mesh in it and obviously to get more air into the, into the carb. Chain guide, look how much larger that is than a stock CR500, that's, that's huge. There was no way they were going to let a chain come off and make a DNF. 
that AFAM sprocket again with a different bolt pattern to stock. And if I look underneath, you might be able to see the billet. Uh, that was called the Delta Link back in the day. And that iconic Technocell number three. Another interesting little thing with the works silencer, the ball was off centre for some reason. I do not know why to this day, but they decided for some reason, and it must have been a good reason to have it off centre. See the diameter of the much thicker spokes and much thicker hub. There might be some markings somewhere on Maybe on the silencer, the silencer should have an N, NT8 or NT7G, I think it is, was the, the denotion yeah, that, that was made at an RC. And the cool little cutouts look on the plastic, uh, plastic protector. Let's have a look at that billet delta link again. You'll be able to see it. Frame again, hand welded with a built-in metal, steel um, skid plate. What a tool. As I said before, you'll be able to see this bike at VMX DN Fox Hills. It'll be started up. It'll probably do a lap of the track. So we'd all, all like to see you down there and I hope you'd enjoyed uh, this little video and showing you close up and personal what an RC500 is like. Thank you.